So it is well with me on every side. You know, if even my mother, my mother would never do this, but if, you know, when you become, you understand something spiritually, if even my mother gets angry and attempts to curse me, it won't stand. Because my gifts that I've given her will nullify the curse. You see, gifts are powerful. Offerings are very powerful. If for whatever reason, maybe I know her one day, she decides to really curse me, which she will never do. It's not in her veins. The thing will reverse. It, will, it, it cannot stand. All the gifts that have gone ahead of me, gifts nullify curses. You have no idea. When people put a curse on you, just find a man of God and sow a seed. If you are covered, the thing will not rest on you. Amen. Let them say whatever they want to. It will not work when you are under spiritual covering. People don't have no idea how advantageous it is to be a member, a committed member of a church. There are some things that cannot happen to some of you just by your connection with this church. It cannot, I don't care where they speak it from. Tukbe, whatever, wherever it's where they shoot it from, it will go back to the people. Because the thing, look, before the thing gets to you, it will see my father. It will see my mentors. Before they get to my father, my father, his one is just kill you. You just say, dead, bam, that's it. My father always say, don't fly over this zone. If you fly, you drop. So all the witches who attempt to fly over otter, they fall, bam. You see birds, he said, he says, over my house, birds fall at will. He said, in my house, birds fall at will. They, keep, they just pick them up and put them in the bin. They tell, he tells them, witches, don't fly over here. And some say, we will try. As soon as they try, they drop. Some fall in the altar. They say, don't come in this ship. They come. Then they fall at the altar. The birds drive, go straight and fall at the altar. When you have a covering, you are not afraid of anybody. They can't threaten you. That's why you need a church, an appointed church, and an appointed pastor. Who knows who he is? And you know him, and he knows you. You are not a register, register name. There's a church in America. They say they are 25,000 members. Now, those who come to church are 5,000. Those who are on the register are 20,000. You can't be a member there. You are not a member by, by your name written on a paper. You are a member by covenant. You are active there. The amen is flying. Yeah. Let me tell you, whenever I preach, you don't say amen. It's choking you or you are listening. Which one do you want to say? You are lying. <laughs> it's choking you, man. Somebody says a bit of both. Listening and choking, is it? You're profiting in life. From the scripture... Your profiting in life and your well-being and your longevity depends on your obedience to your pastors and your honoring your father and your mother biologically. My children can never be cursed. I don't care who attempts to. They will drop dead. My children honor their parents. My children are doubly blessed. We are their spiritual parents and we are their physical parents. So they honor us and obey us. So it's impossible for curses to hang around them. My children have come under all kinds of attack, including tie, a car tie running over my son's leg. Look at him, still playing the drums. They can't be killed. We have been told by my spiritual father, 120 is the minimum. None of you are permitted to die below 120. None of you are permitted to die below 120. That's the covenant. That was what it was before the fall. 120. And not just living, just growing old, but old and relevant at every age. Every time, every, anytime your age increases, you are still relevant. Relevant, useful, significant, impactful. Making sense. No walking stick, no geriatric ward, no hospice. I forbid it over your life. What a pastor decrees is what the members become. No hospice. No geriatric ward. That's why you need a word-based church appointed by God. You don't choose who your pastor is. If you die below 120, I won't bury you. I'll refer you to some uncle. So don't even attempt to die now. Get packed up 
with your purpose so much and have a vision, draw a program for your life. Things you will do next year, you will be too busy to die. When death comes, tell him, go and try somebody else. Here, here, we don't die. Tell them, here, we don't die early. Let me hear you say it. Here, we don't die. Say it again. Say, we have got too much to do to die now. I don't care what medical science says. It will not work in your body. I said it will not work in your body. Rise up and say, I am very well. 120 minimum. I have said it and I keep confessing. You see, but what you say is what the numbers 14, 28. As you say in my ear, so will I do to you. I will see my great grandchildren. I will see my daughter's gray hair and her daughter's gray hair and, the, and their son. Sounds black hair. I will see crazier grow old, oh, psychedelic. Gray, I will see your gray hair. That should tell you how long I will live. Or her hair is black now, and for at least the next 20 years to be black, then you will start turning. See, what you decree, you are a prophet of your destiny. What you say is what you get. Grandma is still alive by my pronunciation. Hmm? You know she had a stroke. And she lay on the floor from 10 to 4.30. And we got that she didn't know her bearing. Within a week, God had healed her. Look at her. In the morning service, I said to the people there, those of you who are not here, some of you need to do exercise and lose weight because the pro your prophecy, what was it we said about the plate? The, your plate is a prophecy of your future. If I want to know whether you will live long, I just need to see your plate. Some of you, when they put food on your plate, it doesn't mean you should eat all. When God sees your plate, he knows whether he can give you as an assignment that will last for 20 years or one year. He looks at your plate to determine the assignment he gives you. Because some, some people, he knows they won't live long. There's no need to tell them they will go to Russia next year. Because before Russia, <laughs> they will be like Gaddafi. So there are the spiritual things you must do and there are physical things you must do. There are some things you must stop eating. Some of you drink Coke. You hear, you drink it. This is the life. Some of you need to stop drinking. It's not good for your heart. All the time you are drinking gas corn. Uh, ga, uh, what's, what's this? Gavis corn, Rene, Andrew's liver salt, Andrew's liver sugar. Your pastor is the only one who can tell you these things. If you hear me, say, I hear you, sir. Yeah, I need you to live long. You need to live long to fulfill destiny. This world is waiting for the manifestation of saints. So your obedience to your pastors determine your profit in life. And then number 10, stay properly aligned to your pastor and his ministry. Stay properly aligned to the pastor and the ministry. Why? You see, don't just be a member. Be joined, be covenantly aligned to your pastor and the ministry. Why? Look at the scripture. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. If you are joined in covenant with your pastor, you are one spirit with your pastor. So what happens in his life happens in your life. Many people are so aloof. They are so far off from their pastor. They are not in one spirit with them. You know, you can be around a pastor and what works for him does not work for you, even though he may even give you his mantle. Elisha worked with Elijah. And when Elijah was about to leave, he passed his mantle on to Elisha. When Elisha got to the river Jordan, he said, where is the God of my father, Elijah? So now, he, had, he was no longer his boss. He was his what? Father, spiritual father. Then he struck the river, and the thing parted into two. He used his father's mantle, and the river parted into two. But Gehazi was given the same opportunity. He was given the staff of Elisha. But because his heart was not right with his master, he put the staff on the dead body, and the dead body did not rise. So, a pastor can give you his handkerchief, his wet towel, his suit, his cap, his Bible, whatever. You may sit in his car. You may handle certain personal things of his. If your heart is not right, what is on him will not work for you. Am I talking to some? You see, 
People need to get this message. I'm, I'm sending this message globally. People need to hear this message. He said, he that is joined, can you put it up? He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit, not two spirits. You see, you come to a place where you are so hooked and covenantly related to your pastor that you and him have become one. So what responds to him? Responds to you. Every one of you here must duplicate. I'm duplicating, Papa. I'm not ashamed. The thing is happening with ease. No sweat. 